Mommy, I think I don't want this food today. Why, buddy? Because I don't want it, Mommy. I want something else. Like what? I want American food. American food? Like what? I want pretzel. I want... Can I take pizza? No, 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 I can't. Okay, I want pretzel and some potato chips and orange juice. Okay. That's what you want? That's what you get, okay? All right. Then I packed up his lunch. Hey, precious people. It's me, Precious Mario, and welcome to my channel. And uh, today's message is going to be about parenting, parenting tips, and how to parent your child through your stories, through your personal experiences, and sometimes, however painful it, it, it might be. Um, so a survey was done, and out of the 100 parents surveyed, you know, over and over again with several questions, 49% um, said they were great parents. 69% said they could use some tips, you know, to be better parents. And 39% parents, parents said they were struggling. It was, it was the hardest job and it was so stressful for them. And it, it meant they were struggling. And another survey was done on when you think you can really parent a child, discipline or teach them some morals and values. And like 40% said mm, around six to nine years. 50% said around hmm, five to seven years and just a few, just a handful, like 20 something said, you know, from when a child is born to around five years old. And the survey kind of gathered that for the most part, some parents are kind of winging it. You know, we are parenting our children as we go. So this video is just going to throw some, some light on parenting tips. And back to the story I was telling you in the beginning, so I've learned one thing in marriage and in raising children, you lose some battles to win a war. So I lost the battle and he was happy. He had his way and he went to school with his American food. And that was okay. But when he came back from school, I asked him, I said, buddy, how was school? He said, fine. I said, can we talk? He said, yes, mommy. So I sat him that took him to my room, I sat him down. And I said, can you tell me what's happening in school? And he said, um, I just don't like my food anymore. And mind you, some time ago, the teacher called me and he said, um, Precious, I think your son is struggling with his food because we, I used to give him his food. And then he said he wanted school food. And then we paid for the school cafeteria food, but he was losing weight. He wasn't eating that much because the way I raised them, they eat mostly, you know, they eat some stuff from American stores and stuff, but they eat mostly African stuff. So it was, the transition was kind of hard for him. So I went back to giving him the food I know he eats at home and he takes it to school. He said, my friends will always ask me questions and they will say, what, what was that you're eating? And they, they make faces and stuff. I said, so are you ashamed or what? He said, yes, mommy. I said, but why? That's your food. He said, I know. I said, don't you like it anymore? He said, I like it. So I knew something was going on. And um, I said, can I tell you a story? He said, yes. I said, look, when I was growing up, Grandma Nigeria, he has two grandmas. So he has a grandma here with us and he has a grandma Nigeria. I said, Grandma Nigeria used to give me Nigerian food. He said, really? I said, yes, buddy. He said, did you like it? I said, yes, I like it. But at first, I didn't like taking it to school. He said, really? Now I got his attention because now he knows it's something mommy and him shares together. He said, so what happened, mommy? I said, so I took it to school at first, but I was ashamed. But Grandma Nigeria told me, that some children don't even have food to eat. That some children will do anything to have the food I had. So I like to appreciate the food I had because I was grateful to God for providing the food I had. And it didn't matter whether my friends liked it or not because I liked it. And it was a healthy food. So I said, the food I give you, are they healthy? He said, yes, mommy. So this was where we clicked. And he got I had all his attention. I said, do you know, Toby, some children right now don't have food. He said, really? I said, yes. So when you throw away food, remember, some children don't have food to eat. Some children rely on the cafeteria food to eat. He said, wow, I didn't know, mommy. I said, yes. So you shouldn't be ashamed of the food you go to school with because it's your food. It's what you eat in your house. He said, wow. Okay, mommy. And since that day till today, he takes everything. I told him, I even went to school with fufu and soup. He said, you went to school with fufu 
I said, yes, I did. I went to school with rice. I went to school with beans on ripe plantain. He said, wow. And that was how we solved that dilemma. Telling your children your story kind of makes them understand that they are not alone in whatever they are going through. It gives them a lesson and it, it builds confidence. It builds trust. It builds their self-esteem. And it makes them kind of rely, rely on you. It makes you a safe place that they can come and share things with you when they are in trouble or when they make mistakes because they know that even though they are wrong, you will scold them, but you will always love them through their struggles. So this is something that I, I, I want to share today because our stories are important. And the most vital time to start teaching this is from birth. You start from birth. From when the child is forming, when the brain is maturing, when the brain is developing, from birth, you start teaching a child. You know, you have to do it at their own level. You know, sometimes I even had a story where I, when I was in high school, about to be a senior, my friends were buying my lunch. Now, my mother, my mother didn't know this. Now, she'll find out from this video. My friends were buying my lunch, and I'll take the money, and I'll sell them my food <laughs> because they like the food so much. But this was a food that at first, some people were like, hmm. you know, they laughed at me. Like I was different. I was weird because I wasn't like every other kid. But my confidence was already built back at home from, a very, from the relationship I had with my mom. And he also made my child to appreciate the value of whatever he had because he knows that some children don't even have what he has. So he's always grateful. And sometimes when my other son wants to throw away his food, he said, don't do that. Don't do that. Some children don't have food to eat. Don't do that. Cover it. So they always cover their foods. And then when they want to eat something else, mommy, can I eat this or something else? But they know not to throw away food because of just a mess story that I shared with him. So what are the stories that you have? Are you holding them back? If you have babies and little children, share your stories with them. It will be something that, it's, that you and your child will click with. Even when they are teenagers, share your stories with them, share your experiences, your past with them. But do it in a way that there will be a lesson for them to learn. And they will know that they are human, that whatever feelings they have, it doesn't diminish who they are. But this is a feeling that everybody goes through and then you help them walk through it. So today I just hope uh, I have blessed somebody to share your stories with your children and teach them the values and the morals in it and so they know that you are their role model because today parents are complaining and they are losing grip on their children. The children are listening to Instagram models, twerking celebrities, and you know, all crazy people out there. A parent is the first contact a child has and is the first role model a child has. And we have to hold on to that. And the early, the earlier you start, in, you know, in, um, impacting this knowledge in them, the better it is. It takes root. And when it takes root, when they start growing up and they begin to, you know, wander and waver and waver and waver, some, somewhere in their subconscious, your voice is still there. Your voice is always there. What will mommy do? Or what will daddy do? Your voice is always there guiding them. Because he has, he has guided me a lot of times. I would have made a crazy mistakes, but I always hear my mother's voice in my ear. I'm like, here we go again. Here we go again. I can't even do this. My mother is not here, but her voice is in my hair. How can I, somebody please get it out. But this is because she started very, very early. Where some people say, hmm, that's just a child. That's what children do. And eh, that's just a child. No, but she always knew that the formative stage of a child's character is from birth till around six, seven, eight years. When you lose this formative stage, you have pretty much almost lost the child. Now you have to do extra, extra work to get that child, to reel the child back in and then teach them the values. But when you start early to teach them these values, your work going on, going forward is easier. You have an easier work with that child. This is proven. This is proven, tested and proven. And, uh, you guys should share this video if you think this is something that has blessed you. You could bless another parent that is out there that is holding back to share their stories, to share their personal experiences. Just a, a simple parenting tip, but it goes a long way. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Love you all.